Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, we're gonna be talking about the peephole optimizer, which is a funny little thing. Usually you don't think about Python being optimized, but there are a few things that the Python compiler optimizes. And so we're gonna talk about a few of those um, and show you how you can visualize the peephole optimizer as well. So you can't just, you're not just taking my word for it. Anyway, let's jump into it. Okay, so this originally came up because Ashish, uh, proposed these series of functions on the Discord and asked which one should be faster. Um, I initially guessed that, so, you know, there are a bunch of different Boolean expressions based on some global variables and, uh, you know, either nested ifs or chained ands or chained bitwise ands. Um, and my intuition on this was that um, this would basically be based on whether there was short circuit evaluation and nothing else. So when I when I looked through these, uh, this was the one that I thought that I was going was going to be the fastest. This if false case because it's basically just going to run if false. That's going to be false, and then it's not going to evaluate any of these other ands. Uh, whereas with a bitwise operator, it would have to you know evaluate all of these. However, I ended up being wrong about that for an interesting reason. There were actually a couple of the functions which were completely equivalent. One of them being this case six here, oddly enough, despite all of these nested things. Uh, I think these two also were equivalently as fast and as was case five. Yeah, so all of those. So five, five D, five E and six were all basically the same. Uh, and the reason for that is uh, the optimizing part of Python's compiler. And so we're gonna talk about that in a little bit. Uh, but basically the optimizer was able to see that these are completely trivial functions and eliminate them entirely. Uh, it was not able to do it with this one because the optimizer does not consider logical expressions for whatever reason. Um, but anyway, let's jump into it and show you a little bit more about what the people optimizer means and how you can visualize it. So we're gonna open up Python today, Python 3, of course. And I'm just going to start by making some kind of trivial functions. So we're just going to call this function f. We're going to assign some variable. Let's just do 2 plus 2 and return x. Uh, now, a human looking at this would be like, oh, x is obviously 4. And fortunately, Python also looks at this function as like, oh, yeah, of course, this is 4, so I can optimize that. Um, and we can visualize that by using the disassembler. I did another video on the disassembler. I will link that in the description as well. Uh, it talks about how Python is actually compiled, <laughs> which we're, we're about to see as well here. Um, if I run the disassembler on this function, you'll notice that the two doesn't appear anywhere uh, and that Python has optimized this directly to load const four. So what the people optimizer has done is it's seen there is a literal number and then an addition and then a literal number and it has optimized that together. And it can actually do that for um, quite a lot of things, uh, 2 plus 2 times 5 plus 3. It should actually be able to evaluate this as well. Just this f. Yeah, so you can see that it has, you know, it has done the math, so to speak, and <laughs> optimized that constant to be 15. This also means, uh, and this is, <laughs> this actually comes from other languages where they tell you not to do this. This also means that if you add a bunch of string literals together, it's not any slower than if you would have done it, you know, just as one. Uh, this is specifically for adding literals. Uh, there is another optimization in Python that's about uh, adding to a variable, and Python has an optimization, optimization for that, but that's unrelated to this uh, people optimizer. Just because I want to show you that as well. Uh, foo plus bar. Um, oh. Yeah, okay, it still works. <laughs> so the, the people optimizer has noticed that, again, these can be optimized to foo plus bar. Now, interestingly enough, and in what we saw in the um, in that other example before, it doesn't do optimization for logical operators, even though it probably could. Um, you can see here that you know, it has evaluated the full logical and here, despite this always being false, I and mean, it cannot be anything else. Um, but what we didn't show is that it actually optimizes out um, if false branches. So if you have code that cannot be hit, uh, 
you'll see that it doesn't appear at all in the disassembly of this function. In fact, we only see this load const none return value. And uh, I actually did another video on this. Every function in Python implicitly has this you know, return none at the end of it, unless there is uh, you know, explicitly another return statement. So you can see here this was return x, and so it did not have that implicit return none. Uh, but this code is completely eliminated from the code object because the optimizer was able to say, oh, okay, this is always true, so we're always going to hit that branch. There's no branch here. This is always false, so this code can never be hit. And since you know, this code can never be hit, and this is a trivial, trivial code, it's able to optimize that out entirely. Um, is there anything else that I wanted to talk about for this? I think that's all that I wanted to cover here. Um, this has some interesting implications for tools like coverage. Uh, because coverage actually analyzes the bytecode execution, and so it has to somehow map this, you know, this code here to this code here, and it's somewhat impossible um, and kind of tricky to handle. I think there's an open issue on coverage for this. Oh, there's one other situation that the people optimizer that I know of. There's probably more, but I know of that it can also optimize, and that is continue and break statements in loops. Sometimes those get reshuffled uh, to be equivalent code, but fewer bytecode instructions or faster execution or uh, less jumps, basically. Uh, but anyway, hopefully this was interesting. If there are additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.